Hey, how's it going? So what do you have to have in your presentation to actually get people to take action? So we have prospects, they look at your presentation. How can we get them to say, yeah, I'm gonna sign up or I'm gonna buy the product or I'm gonna book an appointment with you, right? We need to get people to take action if we wanna get paid and help them too. So let me go through some points that you really should include in every presentation, regardless of whether it's schedule an appointment, buy a product, or join your team. These are essentials, non-negotiables, and I know that they are because I've generated well over a million pounds worth of sales now, both in my own business and other people's businesses, using crafting power presentations. So let's take a look at that right now. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna call out your target market's problems. Call out their problems. And the reason we do this is because this equals trust, okay? For someone to believe you, if especially right now you don't have huge results, then there needs to be some kind of specificity. There needs to be some way that they say, you know what, this person actually understands my specific situation. Because if you can show you understand somebody's problems, that leans them in to say, well, maybe you understand the solution. Do you know what I mean? Like if I said to you right now, um, hey, if you're a network marketer and uh, you're struggling to know how to create a, com a, a presentation that converts, you're probably thinking what really difference can it make? What slides should I have? Should I show my face or screen share? Blah, 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 blah. You may go, yes, yes, yes. And if that's you, well, give me the solution, Richard. So you need to be able to do that for your audience. What is it you're going to solve call out that problem first so they can say, you understand me, so let me pay more attention to what's coming next. Does that make sense, okay? So that's what we must do first. The next thing you're gonna do is, you're gonna to relate to their internal conversation, okay? So relate to internal. I know my writing is terrible, but just, just get the concepts. The concepts are stellar, make you a lot of money if you apply them. My writing, yeah, not so much. I think it's because I hold my pen weird. This is how I look at my pen. This is how I hold my pen. My daughter holds it the same way. Her writing looks identical. It's a genetic thing. Anyway, you don't care about that. So relating to the internal, okay? Everyone's got this internal monologue that they're going through in their life. And if you can take the time to better understand your target audience, the people who are gonna be watching this presentation, and know what that internal conversation is, if you can pull out some sentences from that, it's virtually a done deal, right? I mean, it just is. The number of people that buy stuff from me and have joined me over the years and have had referred to nothing about anything else other than when you said that, I thought, my goodness, that's exactly what I've been saying to myself. And I thought right then and there, this is gonna be for me. If you can do that, you'll have a lot of power in your presentations. Now don't misuse it. These things I'm teaching you, you're supposed to be selling things that people actually need. I only ever make an offer to somebody, I genuinely believe this is the best solution for you. It can work, it can help you, okay? Please do the same with these tips. So think about and start to look at Facebook groups, start to have conversations with these people, start to look in forums. What are the common sentences that keep on cropping up? Can you insert that into your presentation? Yes, you can, okay? Next point that I wanna talk about is, you need to prove you can do what you say you're gonna do. If I'm in this video right now, right, let's say I'm not going to, but let's say I was selling you a product on um, crafting a great presentation. Well, you're like, okay, Richard, prove to me that you can do that. Well, the best way for me to prove to you, even above and beyond results, which do help, is me delivering you a partial solution. So this would be a great video for me to sell you a course on that if I had one. I do do that service, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. I have to work through somebody. What is your product? What is your price point? And all that kind of good stuff. So I don't do a, a product as yet for that. But the thing is, if I'm, if I'm showing you that I can solve your problem by delivering this education right here and now, you're more likely to buy the product if I was selling you one. Because you say, those points he gave me, I didn't think of all of those. Those are great, those are really help. Well, if I can buy his stuff, that would help me even further. So how can you do that in your, uh, in your presentation? A partial solution. When you do this, it, what's called open loops. If I draw this shape, three quarters of a circle, what do you naturally wanna do if you, if you can see that's a shape? What do you naturally wanna do? You naturally wanna close that loop, right? 
if we're playing like notes and crosses, right, and you see there's a space for another note, you naturally want to do that. It's like going da 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 da. You want to go da da. It's just a natural thing, right? You see a loop. You open one in your mind with their communication. Uh, you open one in their mind with your communication, rather. They want to close that loop. So if you give partial solutions, I mean, you don't want to work for free. You've got a mortgage. You've got finances you need to you know, deal with. So we shouldn't work for free. People, when they ask you this, oh, why didn't you give them it for free? Well, like sometimes people ask me that and I'm like, it took me 10 years to get to this level. 10 years of adjustment and education and paying for coaching and failing and adjusting and winning and like hours and hours and hours and hours of time, like becoming a master at my craft. Why would I just give it to someone for free? Because they asked. It's, it's like disrespectful. <laughs> you know, right? So when someone asks you that, that's what you can say to them. But like if you can give them a partial solution, like here's like three steps to a seven step process, they naturally want the final four. Right. So if you think about if you broke down what you're going to offer them in that in the end of that presentation, the solution you're providing, be it joining your MLM team, be it buying a product, be it whatever it may be. Well, if you can give them, say, 33 percent of the solution, a third of what it is they need, that's enough to prove you are what you say you are. You can offer what you, you know, say you're going to offer, but it's also not enough for them to go away and do it all by themselves. So they're still going to come to you if they're serious about actually solving that problem. You know what I mean? It makes sense, right? Next thing we need to do is we need to provide some testimonials. So this is this is proof, even more proof, right? Have you got a story that you created? You should at least have your own story, right? I came into the business and this is what it's doing for me. If you haven't got your own story, then you can use testimonials. Other people who have got better results than you using as long as the exact same um, solution or product you're going to provide. You know, you can't talk about people that lost a bunch of weight. That's eh, kind of similar to the product I'm selling. No, you can't do that. It's got to be exactly the same. If you've got those stories, if you've got those success testimonials, use them as you go through the presentation. The best way to use them is to filter them into what you're doing. Right. So if you say, oh, you know, um, you want to lose particular weight around your midsection. And that's the same as George. Look at George. This is when George was had that goal too. look at his before and after. So you can include that at the right time in your presentation. OK, don't just like drop it in crudely, make it fit by setting it up with the point that you're making. Right. I, like I just did with that example. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to use stories. I don't mean false stories. I mean, true stories, but tell things in a story. Um, you know, think about when you were younger. How did you how engage you with stories? Stories are the oldest and most proven way to sell and share information. Like it's it, whole religions are built on stories, right? A whole everything is built on stories. Well, apparently so and so said and that's that's fact, right? All of a sudden um, nothing has changed in the fact that we love a good story. So. You know, you can you can include these when you're presenting. Think of again, think of some stories before you create a presentation that actually highlight the point that you're making. For example, I tell a, I told a story in uh, in my presentation about how uh, my grandfather died, and I still went and gave a presentation the next day in my MLM business. It was ridiculous. I never saw my father for 17 years. My grandfather was like my father. And by his bedside, he dies. I go and give a presentation because this could be the one. You know what the upline and the company say, right? Don't don't miss out. It's such present, it's such pressure on my shoulders because of the financial situation we're in. I went and did the presentation. Within five minutes, I knew it wasn't for her. What a waste of time and about an hour and a half of my time to get there, do the presentation, and get back. I, like at that point, then and there, I'm like, enough is enough. This is no way to build a business. So I tell that story when I'm talking about how I became more aware of building in a more modern way. Because people often say to me and challenge me, oh, the traditional methods work. I'm like, look at your income disclosure statement. No, they don't. But anyway, above and beyond the facts, you know, I talk about that story. Well, the reason I came into building my business this way was because I knew enough was enough. Let me tell you about the day my grandfather died. It's a true story. I did do a presentation that day. It was ridiculous. And people remember that. They go, my word. Where does this end? It could be the one, it's around the corner, present to five more, five more, five more. Well, for me, it ended that day. So can you see how you probably out of all this entire video, even though you came here for presentation tips, you may just remember that story. 
right? And, and that's because it is a story. So use that in your presentations, okay? Stories definitely are useful. Also, if you're able to, use humor. Maybe not in a grandfather death story, right? It's not a good time. But I just use a joke. I told you a joke on a purpose, right? Because if I can make you laugh, I can make you like me. Right. And, and also it feels good. I want to make people laugh. I want them to learn something from my video, but I also want you to enjoy the time we spent together. So you want to come back. If you've got that guy, Richard teaches really good stuff. It was useful for me. I took one thing away from 10 minutes with him that was useful. Great. I mean, you can craft a great presentation. You can make lots of money. So it's time well spent. But if I can make you smile even a little bit while we do that, you're going to go, well, okay, I actually enjoy learning those things from you. You think about your favorite teacher at school. It wasn't just because they taught you in a way that helps you learn. It's also because you felt good about the way they taught you. Probably they craft, uh, cracked a few jokes. Um, probably they made you smile a little bit. They made it interesting. Same with the presentation, right? You're just teaching someone information through a presentation. Next thing you want to do is what's called test closers. Right, because you know you want to create a presentation that sells, don't you? You're going to say yes in your brain. Well, that's a test close. So think about as you go through your presentation what you're asking them to do at the end, and sort of test close them, test test the uh, the waters as it were. So if you're if I'm that person doing the weight loss thing, and uh, I want people at the end of it to schedule a call with me about their weight loss throughout the presentation, I'm going to say things that have them say yes in their mind which are linked to that outcome. So of course, it'd be smart for you to get some help on this, wouldn't it? Yes. So you understand, right, the importance of keeping your body fat down for your health, right? And I would leave it at that, and they're gonna go yes in their brain. So periodically through your presentation, every second or third slide, as it were, every, uh, every minute or two, make sure you're saying to somebody, you know, I do it naturally, does that make sense, right? And you know that works, right? I, I say that a lot. Um, and it's natural from all the presentations that I've made. I'm involving you in this conversation and I'm also getting you to say yes, yes, yes to me. So if this was a presentation, which it isn't, and I was selling you a product, which I'm not, at the end, you're more likely to go yes, yes, yes. So buy my stuff, yes. It's just the way it works, okay? Test close. Don't do it every single two seconds, you know? So you want to do this, yes, you want to do that, yes, you, they get fed up of it. Maybe every minute or two, every second or third slide is enough. Uh, we got a, a couple more, okay? They want to have a clear, what we call CTA, call to action or a clear next step. At the end of this video, I'm going to say to you, uh, if you want more training like this, go to richardmathru.com, got a bunch of free training for your network marketer and paid products too. That's my call to action. I'm not going to give you 10. Okay, so go to my website. Oh, you may want to try this webinar. Oh, you may want to go for that product. Oh, subscribe as well. Oh, look at the, I mean, like you'll do none of them because it becomes unclear and uncertainty breeds inaction. So we want this to be a presentation that inspires action, right? So if, I just did a test close again. So if we want them to take action, we need to let them know what that action should be. If we're going to fire them up with information and say, like for me, I'm saying, so go and create a presentation. Okay, I'm going to go do that, right? So we want to say at the end of the, of the presentation that you're going to create, what is it you want them to do? Do you want them to schedule a call to find out more? Do you want them to sign up on a trial? Do you want them to reach out to you via messenger? Do you want them to buy a certain product or join a certain team? What is it that the call to action is? pick that one clear next step and drive everyone's attention towards that through the presentation and with a clear call to action. Now coming off of that, what you really must do with that is you must offer value for them to do that and urgency, okay? So it's no good me saying to you, again, if this was when I was selling something to you, so go check out that website, you know, you'll probably enjoy it. I need to give you value for doing that and urgency for doing that. So let's pretend my website is a product and I wanted you to go and buy something there. I would be saying to you, you know, if you go to that website, that is the best resource of home business training you're ever going to find. Plenty of people out there do the rah, rah, woo, you're amazing. And then you learn nothing practical. If you actually want practical steps 
to create a couple of grand a month in your business additional as soon as possible. Go and be above and beyond that by generating an authority brand. That's the link to go to. In fact, I can only do this for the next 24 hours. I'm only going to open it up for 24 hours and then when that window closes, I'm going to reevaluate the pricing and the offer. So if you want it, you need to do that right now. So I gave you value for going and doing that right now and I gave you urgency to spur you to do it. It makes a big difference, right? If that was a real pitch and a real product, you're more likely to say, yeah, I'll click that because there's specifics there. That's the reason why you want to go there, not just so I can make a sale. Look at what you'll miss if you don't. Oh, and by the way, you are going to miss it because there's urgency. Make sure these are true. Like when I'm selling a product, the lowest price it ever is, is when I launch it. So I inspire people, I say, listen, go do that now because when the launch period ends, this will be the best, the soon as soon as you become aware of my products or services, the best deal you can get is right there and then at, the, at that time on the day. My prices only ever rise with inflation and as I deliver more and more value. So the, and all updates are included in the price of my products. So the best deal you're ever gonna get is right now. And I train my audience to know that by informing them of it. So they know that there's urgency built into my content. Go now, it's the best, it's the best deal right now, okay? And then if it's a particular launch, there's a launch period, there's additional bonuses. You can use all sorts of different things to inject ur genuine urgency into what you do. So was that useful? We got finished there in 16 minutes near enough. So that, that's, that's not bad, right? 16, less than 20 minutes of your time to learn something or rather advance your skills, because there is more to it than this. There's variations if you are selling a, obviously if you're selling a $7 trial, different than selling, say, a $5,800 coaching product. Different if you're selling a product than an opportunity. Network marketing compared to a consultancy service or a one-time affiliate offer. There are in, I can never say the word, and I don't know why I keep trying to say it, in intrinsicities, I think I've said that right, details. There are details that could do with changing to give you the best conversions, but they're worth learning and these will give you, let's say they give you 20% better, uh, better sales. 20% better sales. So 20% increase, and let's say every, that means every 10 people you show it, it's gonna be plus two, right, plus two. Now let's say those two people equal $100 in, in commission, even if you're going low and it's just a network marketing sale. It could be anything up to, let's say, 9,800 per sale if you're doing high ticket, which is like, let's say, 19K, okay? So you imagine if every 10 people you put through your presentation, it's another 100 or another up to another 19K. This is worth learning. I hope you got value from it. Please become good at presenting what you do, okay? And people often say to me in network marketing, well, why don't I just use my company presentation? Um, because it's rubbish. Um, none of these things are in that. You know, what they try and do in, in a network marketing presentation is they have to be very gray. They can't be black, they can't be white. They have to appeal to a very broad range of people. The way a network marketing presentation generally works is just to generate enough curiosity to have them say to you, okay, now you give me all the information. So if we're looking to try and make a sale on a presentation or really reduce the number of questions and reduce our workload, we really wanna try and accomplish as much as we can in that presentation. I sell a $2,000 product day in, day out, without ever speaking to anybody. It's a presentation that does that for me in the form of an automated webinar. So I don't wanna to have to answer 50 questions over and over and over again like a telephone sales rep. I'd rather them see the information, take action by themselves. If you ever wanna be in that situation where someone will take immediate action from your presentation, it needs to be specific to that person, their goals, their needs, their problems, the only way you can do that is have a specific target market that you position in front of a specific presentation that you created. A general network marketing one will create additional work for you. This one will reduce your workload and increase your profits. So that's my take, having done this myself and sponsored nearly 800 people with this method, okay? So I hope that helped. I hope you got value if you did. I'd appreciate if you liked or engaged with, you know, that's how I, it's the only way I can know that I'm delivering something useful to you is if you let me know that. Um, if you've got a comment, obviously comment if you're on YouTube, if you're on my podcast, easy to reach out and find me. If you're on YouTube, again, my social media is underneath here, so you can, you can find that. 
Um, also, what I would say is, at the end, my website, Call to Action, if you're in the market for some more training or even a paid product, and you're a network marketer that wants to build your team in a way that also opens up other revenue for your own brand, um, I'm the guy to come to for that. I'm the only one doing it, and I'm the best anyway, even if I wasn't the only one. Some things I'm not good at, that I am good at. I'll see you over at richardmathrew.com if you make it there. As for now, go create a day in a life that counts. Always have more desires and excuses. Whatever you're doing, have a fantastic day, and bye for now.